It's a weird counterintuitive phenomenon. Two games, each of which with a higher probability of losing than winning, can be combined to produce a strategy through which you are guaranteed to win. It's Parondo's paradox, the game you win by losing, first discovered in 1996 by Spanish physicist Juan Perrondo, giving him quite a bit of fame. Professor at the Complutense University of Madrid, his research covers several aspects of statistical mechanics, from quantum thermodynamics to entropy and information in biophysics. CISA director Stefano Ruffo sat down with him for a brief chat on his work. And, uh, I would start from uh, Richard Feynman because uh, he's a very popular character. So, and uh, your paradox has uh, a lot to do with uh, the concept of the ratchet of Feynman. So, maybe you can uh, tell us uh, this uh, sort of contradictory uh, 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 machine that Feynman uh, 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 speaks about in his book and that there's in fact a long history before, before Feynman. Yeah, actually uh, this example or, or the Gedanken experiment that Feynman describes in his lectures it originally was uh, proposed by Smolchowski in the 20s, I think. And it is the idea that uh, you have always uh, um, thermal fluctuations which are very weak but in the microscopic world are important. So uh, the idea that Smoluchowski and then Feynman had is whether we can uh, extract energy from these uh, fluctuations. And this idea actually comes from Maxwell Demon and uh, the, the demon that Maxwell proposed. So a ratchet is something that can, is something that it is an, in our, our watch, in, in the old watches that, uh, that uh, you can, uh, the, the random motion of your, of your arm uh, is transmitted to a wheel with the, with the teeth asymmetric, so it can turn only in one direction. And then uh, Smolchowska and Feynman had this idea of can we use these ratchets to rectify fluctuations and to extract energy from a single thermal bath. This will violate it, this will violate the second law, so it is in, impossible. So Feynman uh, tried to uh, understand why this is impossible. And then this was a kind of academic example, but uh, it turned out to be useful to explain motors in the, in the microscopic world which are important, for instance, in biophysics, where there are a lot of, in the living cells, there are a lot of motors that transform some kind of fuel into motion, and also in nanoscience. And uh, this is the, uh, the ratchet. I was studying this when I came out with the idea of these games. Okay, just uh, a word more about the Maxwell demos, because uh, we heard about the ratchet now, we would like to hear something about the demons, <laughs> which are these uh, machines and uh, characters in this uh, game. Yeah, okay, the Maxwell demon, the, the, always the idea was what is the validity of the second law. So Maxwell in, in 1867 came with this idea that if you have information about the system, you can use this information uh, uh, to uh, apparently uh, defeat the second law, the limitations of the second law, like you can extract energy from a single thermal bath. And uh, a Feynman ratchet is similar, is, is, this, the, is a similar idea, although it's called an autonomous Maxwell demon because it does not need any, any uh, the action of an external agent. So this is this line of research that comes from the 19th century. The research on the Maxwell demon had these two, two directions. One is the original Maxwell demon, what is the role of information in, in the validity of the second law and can, uh, what, can we incorporate information to the second law? This is one research of line which uh, I, I've worked on uh, for and many other people for the last years. And also this autonomous uh, 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 Maxwell demons, which are not really Maxwell demons, in the sense they don't violate the second law. They just use resources to produce motion and work. Let's now come to the Parondo's paradox. So, of course, it originated from this area of research, ratchets, demons, and so on. And then the second part of the question is: Is it really a paradox? So, well, I of course. 
I, I never named it as part of the spark. This was some, somebody else. But uh, why I, I came with these games? Well, because uh, um, the, um, I was uh, studying these ratchets. And the simplest model of a ratchet is, is, a, is a, a particle, a Brownian particle, so a particle that it, it, it fluctuates, its motion is fluctuating, and it is in a potential that uh, flashes. This is called flashing ratchet. It's a potential that it switch on, switch off, switch on, switch off. And uh, some people, Jacques Pro and Armand Dary, they uh, uh, propose this model for the motion of some mo molecules in the cell. And uh, I realized in, in 96 that uh, this flashing ratchet had a, a, a called counterintuitive behavior. Is that uh, if you flash, a particle moves, uh, let's say, uh, upward, uphill. So if the potential is off or on, the particle goes down. And if you alternate between the two, the particle goes up. This was almost known in 96 for the reduced community of people working on, on Brownian motors and ratchets. But I said, well, why this is a funny and counterintuitive behavior. Let's put it in more simple terms. So I decided to do it with games. And now motion is winning or losing. And now you have two games where the player loses in average. And when you alternate them, the player wins. And then I present this as a kind of a, a, a joke or a curiosity without, I didn't give so much importance. Actually, the first time I presented it was in a, a, a workshop that you organized in, in Torino in 96. And then it, it, this was a, 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 just a single slide in my talks. And Derek Abbott from the uh, University of Adelaide, he saw that there was something interesting there. So in 99, he published a paper uh, with, uh, he named the effect as Parondo's paradox. And then after that, for my su own surprise, was really successful. So your first uh, uh, presentation of the paradox is a slide in a conference and you never published, but uh, Abbott published. So there is no paper, in fact, on the, the first you, one on the on the Parondo paradox. No, no. The, the, of course, after this uh, unexpected uh, success, I I worked on it, and we published like different versions, uh, physical regulators with a, a new version of the paradox, and it was nice that some developments that we had in in the game domain we also translated to the ratchet domain back. So the, the games was, were inspired by the ratchet, but some of the mm, later development of the ratchet was inspired by the game. So it was a win-win. <laughs> so let us summarize. There are two games, a game A and a game B. And uh, if uh, I play uh, both of them uh, uh, independently, I lose. But if I play uh, A twice, A, A, B twice, B, B, and I continue playing A, A, B, 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 A, A, B, B, and so on, then I win. This is yes. more or less the, 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 the paradox, let's yeah. call it. Uh, yeah. Ah, by, by the way, you mentioned paradox. Of course, it's not a logical paradox, like the liar paradox or things yeah. like that. In physics, we call, I, 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 we call it paradox as a counterintuitive uh, yes, effect. Counter there is no any logical contradiction, let's say. So what are the implications, for instance, for evolution, for ecology? I know that there's been a lot of work in this uh, uh, field uh, uh, about the implications of the, of the paradox. Yeah, the, the paradox itself, uh, as, the, as the original one, I, I, I wouldn't say it has no real applications because it's a very artificial example, but uh, the paradox sends a message that uh, it's very simple, that you can have dynamics with some uh, outcome or with some uh, result, a stationary state, let's say, uh, and when you alternate these two outcomes, the, the, the result can be very different from each stationary state. We, we elaborated on this idea, for instance, we the, we made some papers with Javier Buceta where you have a dynamics that in a, in a spatially extended system, in a plane, that 
drives the system to a completely homogeneous state and other dynamics that drive the system to a homogeneous state. And when you alternate between the two, you create patterns. Like, so you can say that complexity arises from alternation. And there are other examples like that, like uh, to, to prove that the alternation of two dynamics can be different. I think this is, of course, a very simple, but it's a powerful message. That, uh, and, and sometimes it's not closely related with the paradox, because the paradox is for a specific stochastic process and so on. But I would say that the, the message of the paradox, in the most general message, is this alternation can completely reverse the effect of two dynamics. And this has been uh, inspiring for, for instance, some people doing evolution. They think that this alternation can uh, give a, uh, play a role in, in evolution. So, do you think that uh, there is a connection between what you are doing in, in quantum information recently and uh, your work on the paradox? Okay. Well, there are uh, quantum versions of the paradox. There are uh, quite a few. One, uh, uh, one with, ran with quantum Brownian motion or quantum random walks, and they have the same, the same. So people have applied, there are some papers also, but they are very speculative on the on alternation of quantum dynamics that can uh, keep coherence, that can reduce the coherence and uh, some proposals like that. Uh, so mm, there is some applications, uh, but what uh, I'm doing now is more related with the Maxwell demon and thermodynamics. So it is more how the ideas of uh, information and thermodynamics can uh, be translated uh, to quantum systems. There is a, a very active field which is quantum thermodynamics, trying to do thermal motor, thermal engines, and thermal ratchets. For instance, these ratchets that we talked about uh, in quantum systems, preserving some coherence in the quantum states. This is a very active uh, field, and I think it's promising because it can be very relevant for quantum technologies. And uh, I don't know if you want to add uh, something uh, of uh, some, uh, what is your impression of this uh, field of research, what you see as future developments in this area? Well, as I said, yeah, quantum thermodynamics, I think it's a big, big uh, uh, field, uh, promising field. And also in biology, people is trying to see what, uh, what is the role of of entropy and information, in especially in molecular biology and cellular biology. So I think these are the two big uh, possible paths that uh, all this research can can follow. And nothing more. Just uh, thank uh, to CISA. I'm very uh, impressed by the uh, quality and. Uh, of the institution and I'm very happy to have been here. Okay, so thanks uh, Juan for this brief interview. Thank you very much.